and welcome to uh, another episode of what I have come to call Heather and Hops. My name is Catherine and I'm a fairly new knitter living in Hertfordshire. I'm here just to connect with people, all kinds of people, anyone's welcome here, um, and discuss what I'm knitting, sort of techniques that I may be learning, my kind of journey into developing my style of knitting, deciding on what I like, um, and yeah, really finding myself through knitting, I guess, and it's just been really, really fun connecting with people so far. There's been quite a few lovely people that have sent messages and little tips and tricks, which has been really wonderful. Um, yeah, today I have, oh, I have a coffee. Uh, it's not the fanciest art, um, but I'm drinking coffee with raw milk. Um, when I have milk, I try and do that. But anyway, uh, the coffee I've got is uh, it's the Nova Blend from Horsham Coffee Roasters. It's a little coffee company that I've grown to quite like. This Nova is essentially what I would describe as their baseline third wave coffee. So it's a little bit, a little bit lighter roasted than the standard chain coffee shops, um, but it's really, really good. So yeah, that's what I'm drinking. It's nice. To, it's nice to share these things. Um, I'd love to do a coffee swap with someone if anyone's interested. Uh, yeah, so let's get going. Um, just from the outset, I have got some knitting to show you, but I do also have a project that I'm going to hopefully record my progress on it today, but we'll get to share with you. Always, that's Audrey's dinner. She has fresh cooked food. That's Audrey's dinner telling me it's ready. Um, train of thought. Oh, yeah, so I've been working very heavily the last four days on a project and I think I've put more than 700 metres of yarn into it. So unfortunately a lot of my knitting has gone on to that the last few days. Not unfortunately, it's, it's been a really fun project. And again, probably not my style or what I love, but it's been really, really good to learn and to work on. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so first of all I maybe show you what I'm wearing, which is a finished object for this past two weeks. It is, oh yeah, I'm, I don't have any shoes on, I don't like that. So this is the cherry pattern by Knit Cafe Midori. Um, I really loved this project. It It only took me a week of commuting to to do it. I mean, I do have a lot of commuting, um, and it's it feels lovely. It really does. So it is knit in mohair. It is Spectrum Fibers smoke, and then the the contrast is uh, I believe just a Rowan kid silk in their light blue or sky blue colour. It had a few new to me te techniques, I guess. Uh, gathered bind offs, which were really, really fun. Um, the first time I did it, it was a three stitch bind off and I only did a two, so I had one sleeve that was still down here and one that was tight and so I had to unpick which. Unpicking mohair Maybe not my favourite thing, <laughs> but I did it and I'm really pleased that I did do it because although it might have been nice to have sort of wide wide sleeves, I do think the belt sleeves are really cute. It's a bit, Alex said that I looked a bit um, Old English. I mean, I think I understand what he means, but yeah, I a really, really fun project to work on. I love the little details on the, the collar and the, the edging. It's just a little bit of purling. I would really like to see how this uh, this pattern knits up in a heavier weight yarn. I do think it would be quite nice but as a spring summer item I feel like I can see another one of these on my horizon or something very similar just because it, it's incredibly warm 
but it's, I mean, it's so light, this is like 50 grams of, maybe 50? Yeah, 50 grams, just over 50 grams of yarn. Yeah, um, very pleased with it. Um, I will stop erming. Coffee. Uh, yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough. The pattern does give you all the information and maybe more that you would need. Especially as a, I keep saying I'm, I'm a new knitter, but I've been knitting now for six months. And actually, I must remember to come back to a complete revelation after uh, I show you this next one. So this is my second finished object, and it is my Moody Romance Cow. This was yarn from my work, so this is... And I, I don't really know how to word it, but I'm really not advertising, but I'm sharing what I'm doing, and I really did enjoy knitting this. Um, the pattern's available on Ravelry that will likely be updated very soon. Um, and I knit it out of King Fiber. This is Okonami. Uh, this is Okonami and Juniper, so this one's Juniper. This one's Rosemary with Juniper. Rosemary. Rosemary and Sky Blue and Sky Blue. I I really loved Rosemary as a colour. Um, and Okanami. I am, as we might be discovering, a fairly not plain knitter, but I like a little bit of something and then relatively subdued. Hmm. Yeah, and maybe I like a little bit of texture or a little bit of colour, but I'm not too... I try not to be too over the top so that I can mix and match items, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a really nice little pattern. The yarn itself is really warm. Um, it's not too heavy. Uh, it's, it has actually more drape than I anticipated it having. Uh, it can be worn in quite a few different ways. That's my moody romance cow. Uh, there is a couple of different yarns in here and I won't speak too much about them, but the high twist is really lo lovely. But this soft and springy juniper, it really is <laughs> very soft and very springy. And it's interesting the way it interacts with the other yarns. You can't actually really see that um, that they are different yarns throughout, but this one here is called Tweed Delicious, and there is some non superwash in it, which makes it seems to make it a, a lot less. Well, this, but yeah, basically, this is still got a lot of give, but the soft and springy. Yeah, if you're looking for something, it might be really nice on a jumper, but uh, anyway, I'll stop. Very nice pattern. A herringbone stitch might be one of my favourite stitches that I've worked on so far, just because it made every single stitch of this quite interesting. Uh, but you, easy to sit and watch television or have a chat or work. So I do recommend that stitch um, as well if you are interested. Yeah, that is that. So. As I said, I have, haven't really put much into my other projects. Um, I'll show you another thing. So all I've done with this one, this is an older project. This is Silver Springs, which I really love, but the way I knitted it uh, made it a little bit wide. So I've just seamed up the top shoulders. So this now fits, so... Or it, it fits a little bit better than it did previously. So that's another sort of little thing that I've done this week. The I have been working on my Rambling Woman, not all that much, but I have now split for the sleeves. And I am on the next main chart, which I really haven't made much progress on that will be able to be shown, but I'm now using this, the next colour from my chosen colours, 
So I think I'm just left, just, yeah. This is the last colour that I'll be adding into this project, I believe, from memory. There might be a really dark one, actually. I might have a dark brown too, but... What I will say is I went to Tribe on Friday last week to do some emergency cake winding, which was amazing. She has a, an electric ball winder, so if you buy yarn from her, you can cake it there and then very quickly. Um, but while we were talking, I was told that the way that the speckles on the croft, uh, this is West Yorkshire spinners by the way, the way they get all the speckles through this so evenly is they actually print it. Now I'd never heard, I mean I'm really still learning, but I thought that was quite interesting that they print the yarn. So if you want something speckled, a little bit woolly, I do love this woolliness. Um, it's not scratchy at all, at least not to my... I do have asbestos hands maybe from years of making coffee. Um, but it is very even and I'm, I'm really loving this project. I want to give it a bit more time because it is a gift and I would like to maybe do a bit of selfish knitting. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I would love to see that on Monica, the lovely Monica, and see it being used. It's, it's been a bit sad watch, watching the whole box of yarn that I've got for the project just sitting there. I'm quite eager to get knitting on that. Again, that's a Caitlin Hunter pattern. All of her patterns that I've done so far and read, I do have a few of her patterns that I have not knitted from. Quite a few, actually. Um, they all seem to have all the information you could possibly need. And if it's something that's maybe slightly different, like steaking, there's a lot of information on those things too. I'm really excited to steak for the first time, but I might cast something on eventually for myself that's steaked that I can do before I do actually cut the seam in that because that's going to be quite a large project to do so. Ooh! I'm hoping you can't hear that too loudly but the rain has really just started coming down. And the last thing is, it's going to be a short one, my Fitchu Blue, which is Oh dear. Uh, Orlain Suchet pattern. It has grown. It is on a slightly longer cable now, but still quite smooshed. I'm re I do really love this. This is Amethyst by Spectrum Fiber. This is her mohair and a soft sock base, I believe. I. This is a really fun project to work on and now this is where I come back to my aha moment that makes me feel like I've had a few comments of people saying that I've been doing a lot of techniques that may be more challenging or they've been too afraid to do it and suggesting that I'm a bit more advanced than I really am. Now here's the proof that I'm definitely not. So up until last week when I was sat up at work and someone mentioned purling through the back loop or a twisted purl and I was having a little think when I got home in the evening and when I do my short rows or I, knit, I very rarely have had to knit flat I end up having to knit through the back loop to untwist stitches and I was getting a little bit, not frustrating, but I was putting more effort in to think about it until I was doing this again. And this one has ribbing and it is worked flat. Um, so for this section, I'd been leaving all the stitches twisted to have a twisted broken rib. For this section, I hadn't. I had been having a normal rib, so I had been untwisting the stitches before knitting them. And it clicked. I needed to go back and look at what a continental purl stitch looks like. Transpires I have been doing a twisted purl stitch forever. So when I knitted my Melted Shrug by Suzanne Summer, not only was I learning to brioche, 
I was learning to do twisted brioche, which is why the colours were so separate. So the back, so normally you can see both colours quite well, but instead it was quite set back. So yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. Um, a very useful thing given that a few of the projects that I've been doing the last few weeks, or the last week since I discovered this, have been I've got a flat project that I'm about to cast on once this other large project's done. I'm sorry that sounds really ambiguous. I promise I will show you the project that I cast on next week and hopefully next week I'll be able to show you the big project once it's photographed. Oh, hey! You come in. You can come up here. Oh, that's so nice. to play with. No, it's not. Anyway. <laughs> hmm? Lady of the Manor. Uh, um, yeah, so I have put some time into this, but now I'm a bit not stuck, but I feel like maybe I should use this shawl as a, a memory of that aha moment of learning about the pearl stitch. So I don't know quite how to finish it. I feel like I should maybe just work the rest in stockinette of this uh, section and continue working twisted rib for this section. Or, yeah, I don't know. I feel like now because I've had that thought, this project should show that. I don't know whether I pearl every. <laughs> I don't want to pearl everything. But... If anyone's got any ideas on what I could do, I could do a, just a single pearl row maybe. But I feel like this has got a bit of specialness to it now, especially because it's it's going to have made my life a lot easier when it comes to knitting projects. I keep playing with this because it's just, I mean, mohair on mohair. Really. This is another project that I would love to get off the needles and get wearing. <laughs> it's still pretty cold here. I don't know if it's been cold everywhere, but we started to get a few days of what felt like proper spring with the daffodils are out. Oh, in fact, we've got something that's flowering in the garden, I've just noticed. Um, yeah, the daffodils are out in the garden. Our hops are starting to grow. The clover's gone absolutely bonkers. Um, I've even got some broccoli, which I'm not sure when that's meant to uh, grow, but it is. I've got some little broccoli heads showing their faces. Or heads. Uh, yeah. But it's got cold again, so that mohair shawl will be very, very well received. Um, stop coming. Yeah. So I think... Really, that's it. I really want to share this with you quickly. I can't say... Maybe I can't. Sorry. I'm going to cut this. Maybe I'm not. I'll leave it in. I don't like to waffle too much, but I am. Um, but I have another really, really exciting uh, thing that I want to show you that is re it is really, really exciting to me. Um, it's a local maker or a maker that I know that's created something that if you're into knitting and you like handmade products that are made literally by hand, it's gorgeous. But let's move on from that so that I'm not, you know, waffling anymore. Um, this weekend I am working at a event called The Other Art Fair, so if you're in London and you want to see me relatively stressed out? No, I, I, I'm not very good at being stressed out. Um, working quite hard making coffee, I will be there. So that does mean less knitting time this week, but that's okay. I quite like working behind the coffee machine. Um, last weekend we went to Wendover Woods, which I'd never been. Um, 
I usually get quite wowed whenever I'm in nature, anywhere. Like, it could be just a pocket park. But I think it might have been something to do with the weather. And it felt like it was man-made. It didn't feel like a true woods. I'm used to, we've got a very nice park near where I live that's got quite a big woodland area that is is quite old. And it just, this Wendover Woods just felt really new and bleak, but not in a a bleak kind of way that you could romanticise, like Glencoe, or though that's quite epic as well as bleak. It was just very strange. So I'll put in a little bit of footage of that. And then we also went to uh, Ashridge, which is a, another estate quite near us, mostly because we love wild garlic. And we did find a little bit, but it's just a little bit too early. So if you are... Oops, I waffled for a bit too long. My camera decided. Shh. Um, so yeah, wild garlic. If you like wild garlic, I do recommend Ashridge if you are in the Hertfordshire area. Um, so that is all for now. I will let you continue knitting, watch some more podcasters. There's loads of people that are doing interesting things on here now. Um, one more public service announcement, other than my purling backwards, which just meant that I was taking the yarn under the needle instead of over the needle to purl continental. Um, there is a really good episode of Christy Glass and it's the one released on International Women's Day with a late, lovely lady called Patty discussing swatching. Um, if you're a new knitter or even if you're a very experienced knitter that chooses not to swatch, I do recommend it. it actually it was another one of those things that made me think in a slightly different way about swatching. It's encouraged me definitely to do so, but also reiterated a few important things that make me maybe a bit more excited about swatching as well as it being accurate. There's nothing more frustrating than knitting a swatch and then it measuring your gauge and then it being completely different. So that's just uh, another little public service announcement thing that I would like to say and share with you. Um, that's it. I hope you are having a lovely, lovely time wherever you are. Um, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of time with me today. It's been a pleasure to sort of share and reflect and yeah, I hope to see you very, very soon. Happy knitting, crafting, whatever you enjoy and I hope to see you very soon. Bye!
Onion barges. You'd like an onion barge? I definitely would like an onion barge. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs>